34th edition of the African Cup of Nations is soon upon us. The tournament that is older than the Euros. The tournament that provides wonderful underdog stories, great goals, and referees who stop matches early. If you want drama, the African Cup of Nations always provides it. And this year, it will be hosted in the Ivory Coast. But today's video is the group stage predictions of this year's tournament. Six groups to get through. I want to hear your predictions in the comments down below. Remember to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And let's get into the predictions. So Group A, which is probably the group of death where we have the host Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Equatorial Guinea, and Guinea-Bissau. In fourth place, I got Guinea-Bissau, a team who are actually on the rise. And they have a lot of good players, especially the striker Francolino, who's been amazing with Michelin this season in Denmark. Say again, it's a team you don't want to play against. But for now, I think Guinea-Bissau will finish fourth, but they're going to give a tough game to every opponent. Third place, I got Equatorial Guinea. You know why I call this team people? The Burnley of Africa. Because they don't care. They will win a game 1-0 and that will suit them perfectly of course their talisman and captain Emilio Nuse is gonna have to be key once again he has been key in the World Cup qualifiers AFCON qualifiers he always gets the crucial goal you remember the pink haired player that they had last time around Ivan Salvador he's also returning Pedro Biang you guys remember him Equatorial Guinea are a tough team to play against and they could really upset Nigeria in this group I think they're gonna finish third because Nigeria just have too much firepower second place I got Nigeria they have not been playing well recently people and I think a lot of people can admit that Lesotho and Zimbabwe embarrassing performances but you know what they have the most craziest attack in the AFCON Osimhen, Victor Boniface, Lukman, Chukweze I can go on but look at the midfield. Look at the defense. And don't even get me started on the goalkeeper. Uzoho? Come on. You have a country like Nigeria. And you're producing a goalkeeper like this? This is going to be the problem. They are going to outscore maybe every opponent. It's just a matter of can they limit the amount of goals they will concede. And can they find some structure that will work for the attack. And I don't trust Pizarro. I think the guy's just the Portuguese Lampard. But I think they have enough quality. And that quality will at least get them to second place in this group. But Victor Osimhen... This is your tournament to shine. And in first place, I got the host Ivory Coast. They've been in a good run lately. They got, of course, quality all over the pitch. Look at the midfield. Sangare, Seco Fofana, Frank Kessie. Obviously, you got Adingra, Haler, Kwame, and Diomande. Remember the name, people. Diomande, the sporting center back. So I think Ivory Coast, with the momentum they got at host, we always see the host do well in the AFCON. I think they can do well, and they're going to finish first. Group B, we got Egypt, Ghana, Cape Verde, and Mozambique. Fourth place, I got Mozambique. They are returning to the AFCON for the first time since 2010. Not a real household of names. Of course, you got Renildo from Atletico Madrid. But other than that, they don't really have enough attacking firepower. And I think they're just here for vibes and enjoying the occasion. So I think Mozambique will finish fourth. Third place, I got Cape Verde. Another team that are very difficult to play against. You know, they don't get destroyed by the top teams in Africa. They got quality all over the pitch like Ryan Mendes, Gary Rodriguez. Obviously, got Patrick Andrade in the midfield from Karabag. And we've seen in many AFCONs recently, Cape Verde, they make it to the round of 16. Usually they go out in that stage. They're in a tough group with Egypt and Ghana. But I got Cape Verde in third place. Second place will be Ghana. There is one thing and one thing only. Chris Hutton better get these tactics right. Because if he doesn't, this team will falter. And we know, just like Nigeria, Ghana got quality all over the pitch. I mean, you know people how much I love Mohamed Kudus. I think the guy's an absolute baller. I'm expecting him to rise at this AFCON. Inaki Williams, Ernest Nwame, Semenyo from Bournemouth. Obviously, Thomas Partey will most likely not be involved in this tournament. And we know one thing also with Ghana. Jordan Ayu is somehow going to start for this national team. Do I see Ghana making it to a quarterfinal? That's the maximum I see. If Ghana do not make it out of this group, that is a disaster. But they will, and I got Ghana finishing second place. And in first place, I got Egypt. Obviously, the record holders of the AFCON. They haven't won the AFCON since 2010. Will it now change? Under Rui Vitoria, they have been playing a lot better. And I think now it's not so heavily reliant on Mohamed Salah. Of course, he's going to be the big name, and everybody's going to expect him to rise. You just see the play of Mustafa Mohamed at Nantes. You see Omar Marmous, who's doing really well with Antra Frankfurt. You obviously have experience in the back. You have experience in the midfield. I think Egypt, they know what they are. They're going to make it to the semifinals, in my opinion. And they should be winning this group. And I got Egypt in first place. Group C, another very difficult group to predict. We got Senegal, Cameroon, Gambia, and Guinea. And in fourth place, I got the Gambia. I love this team. I love some of the players they got. Obviously, you got Minte. You got Kohli. I'm a little bit worried with Tom Seinfeld. Are the tactics now a little bit too outdated? Are defensively they a little bit too exposed? I think they might be. We all love the story they had last time at the AFCON, reaching the quarterfinals, going out against Cameroon. But maybe that sort of fairy tale underdog story is slowly dwindling, but now they need to go into a new direction. Tough group they're in. I hope I'm wrong with the Gambia, but I think they finished fourth. And in third place, I got Guinea. Another team you don't want to play against in the AFCON. They're going to keep it close in games. And now you see what the players they got. Seru Girasi. 
That is the name to watch out for. Obviously, he's matching Harry Kane somehow in the Bundesliga. Can he carry that on in the AFCON? Somehow, Naby Keita is fit. Obviously, you got Amadou Diwara in the midfield. Ilax Moriba. Another team, a lot of talent, a lot of good players. Do they have enough to beat Cameroon and Senegal? I don't think so. I think Guinea will finish third. And in second place, I got Cameroon. I have not been sold on Cameroon throughout the AFCON qualifiers, throughout the World Cup, throughout the World Cup qualifiers. But hey, you know what? They got quality. Rigobert Song. Is he a good manager? I don't really think so. Vincent Abubakar is Mr. Afcon. He always shows up. There is no Chubamoting, which is sucks for them. There is no Mbwembo, which is a huge miss. Andre Onana cannot show the Manchester United form at Cameroon. If he does, Cameroon might go out in the group stage. I don't think that will happen. Abubakar will rise and Guisa will rise. And I think Cameroon will finish second in this group. And in first place, it is the defending champions of the AFCON, Senegal. Of course, with Aliou Cisse, we've seen some reports that he has been unpaid for six months. That is an absolute disgrace. But if we forget about it, Senegal basically have the same team. And with the key players like Goulobali, Sadio Mane, hopefully Nico Jackson knows how to finish with Senegal, unlike with Chelsea. But Senegal, they got experience. I don't think they're really phased. They... they they are a good team, people. They're organized, defensively strong. That's what you need in major tournament football. And I think Senegal will finish first in this group. We have Group D then with Angola, Burkina Faso, Algeria, and Mauritania. In fourth place, I got Mauritania. You might remember the name Kamara from Fulham. He is the striker from Mauritania. They are a good home side. But can that translate to the AFCON? And it hasn't really translated in their two appearances previously in the AFCON. Will it change this time around? I think Mauritania can get a draw, at least against Angola. But against Burkina Faso and Algeria, they don't stand a chance. Fourth place for Mauritania. Third place, I got Angola. They are returning to the AFCON for the first time since 2019. They are missing Helder Costa and Enzola, who will not be selected to the AFCON. They are big misses for Angola. I don't think they can stand a chance against Algeria or Burkina Faso either. This is not really the star-studded team of Angola from 2010 to 2006, where they made it to the World Cup. They hosted the AFCON. This is not the Angola side. I think they finished third in this group. Second place, I got Burkina Faso, a team that always get disrespected in a sense where nobody praises them. Nobody gives them high expectations. I think Burkina Faso can make it to his semi-final once again. Utara from Bournemouth, great player. Tapsoba from Bayer Leverkusen, unbelievable. You just need the likes of Bertrand Torore, you need Hassan Bande. These guys need to get the crucial goals. Do they have enough quality in the midfield to control games? I don't really think so. But in transition, this team are going to be very deadly to play against. And I think Burkina Faso have enough quality to finish second in this group. And in first place, it better be Algeria. After the showcasing they had at the last AFCON, where they finished last in the group and went out as defending AFCON champions. This time around, again, it's Algeria. When you look at the team on paper, it is unbelievable. Ait Nouri, unbelievable left back. Mares, Zerouki, Arwa. Algeria have the talent. It's now about Belmadi. Belmadi, you led the team to the AFCON glory in 2019. Now, you need to show that you are that manager still. And Algeria, they have so much firepower. They can control the midfield game. And I think they will finish first in this group. Group B, we got Tunisia, Mali, South Africa, and Namibia. And in fourth place, I got Namibia. They're here for vibes. They're here to enjoy the occasion. They're going up against their neighbors, South Africa. So that should be an intriguing game. They obviously got Peter Salulule, who plays for Mamelodi Sundowns. And Mamelodi Sundowns, of course, have a lot of players for South Africa. But yeah, it's going to be a tough tournament for Namibia. I think they finished fourth. Third place, I got South Africa. I was really high on South Africa a couple months ago. But recently, some things are kind of hurting me. First off, they lost to Rwanda. Now look, Rwanda are a decent team. I know the pitch was terrible. You cannot be losing that game. But we go to then the squad selection. Halongwane and Bloom from MLS are not selected. Uh, do, you, do, do they drug test? Do they drug test? On you have got to be kidding me, Hogo Bros. What on earth are you smoking? What on earth are you thinking? You bring these two quality players to the AFCON. No excuse. Now look, Lyle Foster is a different story. Hopefully he feels a lot better now. I still think South Africa are a good team. They got a lot of good players. Obviously we know Percy Tao. It's down to Hugo Bruce. Can he get the best out of these players? And they're in a tough group against Mali and Tunisia. I think they have enough to be one of the best third place teams and make it to the round of 16. But in this group, I think they finished third. Second place, I got Mali. Now look, Mali are a team that have a lot of talent but never can translate it to major tournament football or even qualify for World Cups. They're missing some key players. Obviously, no Adama Traore, no Ibrahim Akone. Two big misses. Yes, they still have Yves Pesuma, Musa Gineppo, a lot of good players. Mali are not going to be destroyed by any team. They're going to keep it low scoring. They just don't have enough goal scores. That was evident at the last AFCON. But in this group, I think they can finish second. First place, I got Tunisia. Another team that gets highly disrespected. 
because okay yeah they don't play great football it doesn't matter they play effective football they have good players like Duni, skiri in the midfield slimani in the midfield with those three midfielders they can control any game now it's just about who gets the goals miskani of course achuri who's been unbelievable for after Copenhagen, and tunisia are a team they only want to win one nil it doesn't face them one bit and you know what i highly respect it so i think tunisia can finish first in this group and it's going to be a tough group to finish first. And the last group, we got Morocco, Zambia, Tanzania, and DR Congo. And in fourth place, I got Tanzania. This is now their third appearance ever at the AFCON. They have never won an AFCON game. Will it change this time around? Their league is really improving a lot. It's just going to take, I think, a little more time before we really see this team flourishing at the international stage. You obviously still got Samata, but he's not really that same striker. I think Tanzania, yeah, they're in a tough group. Can they, can they pose a threat? Maybe, but I think it's fourth place for them. And in third place, I got the Leopards of DR Congo. Desabre is doing a good job recently as the manager. Obviously, you have Kalulu, you have Bakambo, you have Elia, you have obviously Joanne Wisa from Brentford who's having a really good season. You have the top goal scorer in Liga Portugal in Simon Bansa. DR Congo have quality and I think they're going to pose a threat to Zambia and Morocco. But against Zambia, that is going to be in a fascinating game. And I think that can be one of the best games in the group stage. So unfortunately, I got DR Congo in third. But I think they can be one of the best third place teams and advance to round of 16. Second place, I got Zambia. Yes, the champions of 2012. They have a lot of firepower. Patsondaka, Sakala, Lamek Bande from Lecce, Emmanuel Bande in the midfield, Kangwa from the midfield. Zambia are a team that are going to outscore every opponent, but might give up two goals a game. They don't care. For them, it's just about outscoring the opponent. They have to be a little bit more structured in the defense, especially going up against Morocco and DR Congo. I think Zambia, with that firepower, will finish second in this group. And in first place, it is, of course, the Atlas Lions of Morocco. The darlings of the last World Cup making it to the semifinals and becoming the first ever African team to advance to that stage of the World Cup. But now, expectations are at an all-time high. There's no, oh, it's the cute Morocco, wonderful story. Now, you need to get the job done. Morocco, their goal is to win this AFCON. I predicted them to win this AFCON. You can go check in all my shorts. But if you look at the talent on this team, and you look at the midfield, and you look at the fullbacks, you're like, Morocco should do this. But will they bottle it? I know a lot of Moroccans. I see some Moroccans in my comments, and obviously I chat with some Moroccans. They always say, Michael, we have expectations, but we bottle it. Hey, this might be a different Moroccan side. For this group, I think they're winning this group. It might be that they draw one game. I think it should be enough, though. This team is so damn good. Hakimi Masrawi, Amrabat Unahi, Enziri Adli, Ziyech, I can go on and on and on. But Morocco, they better be making it at least to a semifinal. But they'll be winning this group and finishing first. There you have it, people. That is the group stage predictions of the AFCON. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Remember, we're going to be doing match day reactions every single day of the AFCON. We'll be having a live preview about four or five days ahead of the tournament. But I want to hear your thoughts. Give me your group stage predictions in the comments down below. Remember to hit the like button. Can we get to 300 likes? And if you've reached this far, put a hashtag AFCONMTF. Have a beautiful day. Stay safe in this crazy world. And until next time, adios. Explain something.